Hi, I'm Isabel Monterosa and I'm a program director at Berks Technical Institute. Today we are here with Building Bridges to Career Success and I'm joined by two members of the admissions team of BTI which are Ryan Hicks, Assistant Director of Admissions and Carly Barber, High School and Community Relations Coordinator. I'm going to start with Carly. <laughs> okay. Carly um, goes out in the community and uh, if you could just let us know um, what your experience is like and what your role is as a high school and community relations coordinator. So uh, one of my main roles is, is to go out and talk to high school students as well as community members and just kind of educate them on what kind of a school BTI is as well as what we do and how we can help different types of people in their career success. Okay, so that means uh, the schools within the county? Um... Mostly within the county, yes. Okay, great. And Ryan, as Assistant Director of Admissions, if you could tell us a little bit about your role and how you um, assist the community as a building a bridge to career success? Well, a lot of times what we'll do is um, I'll help head a lot of the events to go out, um, whether it be job fairs, um, as well as Carly can go out and do those as well. Mm -hmm. um, but also with um, helping with the admissions team to make sure they understand what we're trying to do for the students in the community to make sure that they are getting everything they need out of the questions they may have okay. when trying to enter back into a, a career college. Great. So as a career college, um, you talk to a lot of people and what do you see as being one of the main barriers for some of the potential students um, that they see in terms of uh, reaching that success level that they want? A lot of times it's the negativity surrounding them, mm -hmm. um, feeling that they're not able to accomplish it or get it done um, mm -hmm. because of things that held them back in the past. Right. So um, having that support a lot of times is one of the key components to them being successful here and if they don't feel that they have that at home mm -hmm. that's where we kind of come into play to be able to help them out and encourage them to understand that this is something that can assist them in getting to where they want to be in their career. Great, thank you. And how about you Carly, what would you say uh, is some of the trends that you might be seeing with some of our young students that are exiting the school and uh, might be considering coming to BTI? So um, sometimes students are a little bit afraid because they are first generation college students so mm -hmm. they sometimes don't believe that they can do it or okay. sometimes it's just any type of fear, you know, fearful that maybe they weren't successful in high school but they can still be successful within, you know, post-secondary education. Now I know as a building uh, bridges to career success school, uh, we do assist the non-traditional students for um, many of our programs and uh, we have, you know, a uh, community here in Berks County which uh, is very high of Latino population which there's a lot of language barriers. Ryan if you could share with me some of the things that you're doing to assist bridge that gap. Um, so I have started taking Rosetta Stone um, mm -hmm. to be able to assist with some of the Spanish speaking students um, mm -hmm. especially uh, ones that have taken some classes, maybe if they were from Puerto Rico or from the Dominican Republic where they have taken some English classes, mm -hmm. um, just to help them feel a little more comfortable. So with me not maybe being able to speak it as well back to them, they feel a little more comfortable speaking with me knowing that they feel the same way when they're speaking English back mm -hmm. to me. Um, so it's, been, it's worked out really well. Um, and I think it's, it's shown that they've become successful in classes mm -hmm. because of what you do right. when you're teaching them the English you know, the English classes. And I will piggyback on what Ryan is saying. Uh, Ryan uh, definitely understands a lot of Spanish <laughs> that, that many of the students are not aware of. Um, <laughs> but once they realize that they are, um, they feel comfortable and they're more willing to try to speak, which is great. Um, and it really has been a win-win situation to have Ryan uh, take the Rosetta Stone component of our English Language Foundations portion, except he's taking it in Spanish, so that he can understand firsthand a lot of the difficulties that our students are experiencing in trying to communicate in another language. So I imagine that might have been a little bit humbling for you, a little bit. <laughs> it, it was to mm -hmm. actually know um, what they go through and, and some of the barriers and as much as they're trying very hard. Mm -hmm. um, it's all they want to do because they want to be successful. Um, so I felt, one, myself wanting to know it, um, but two, to make sure to understand how they really feel when mm -hmm. they're coming in to kind of help them be a little more at ease because of, again, we're, we're here to help them change their lives um, no matter what the situation may be. Right, and a key thing, again, with our uh, non-native English speakers is that they're um, becoming bilingual employees. It's not so much about coming here to take an English class or so before they proceed on to uh, their major of study, but 
part of what the advisory committees let us know is that when they're looking for uh, employees, the bilingual employees typically have a greater opportunity here. And uh, so we're focusing on uh, producing bilingual employees, not just people that know another language, but that can be really be useful and resourceful in the community. Are, um, have you run into any difficulties with language barriers um, with your going out to the high school community? Yes, some students in the high school community don't always speak English mm -hmm. at all. Some students are, you know, doing an ESL program within their school. Okay. So it all depends on kind of the school and the type of programs that they have, but a lot of them are really willing to learn English. Great. And as we know that the younger they are, typically it's more of an easier um, transition to uh, being able to learn the other language. So. Um, Admissions also does a lot of kind of um, outside events in terms of like job, you said job fairs and uh, you participate in some other like community events. Um, what typically goes on when you're at the job fair? Does it, um, what, what do you think, is there a particular program that you think might is, have more interest or what, what do you feel? I mean, a lot of times I, the medical field seems to always be the go-to um, along with, I, I, would, I would say business as well, mm -hmm. um, just because they're very broad. Okay. Um, it gives them a lot of different opportunities and a lot of times they're looking for more set hours and what they're, what they're used to doing instead mm -hmm. of doing overnights all the time or if they already are in the medical field and they're working 12, 16 hours, mm -hmm. they're looking for more of a set okay. hour, um, you know, a, a nine to five, uh, you know, just traditional hours so that they can get in and, and not feel that they can't have a work-life balance. Right. Um, and that's okay. something I feel we really do here is work well with the students where another thing they feel are, well, I have children, I have to work full time, I don't have time for school. Mm -hmm. With the way that we do things here at BTI, we're able to accommodate them right. and help them out. And, and everyone in the whole entire BTI community is very helpful with doing that. Absolutely. How about you, Carly? Are there any um, situations when you're out there where, you know, we have to remove some of the myths that some students might have about attending a career training school? Yes, uh, every once in a while because, you know, every time you go out, a lot of students are always used to hearing that four year, which is great. It's great to go to a four year school, but some students don't want to go to school for four years or mm -hmm. some students would prefer some more hands on training besides, you know, going to a four year. So, you know, going out and being able to tell them, you know, what kind of school BTI is, it's a little bit more helpful for them to kind of figure out, you know, what types of things they'd want to do. Right. So um, when you um, have per um, prospective students, um, typically do you have a process that will help if they don't already know what's going, what they're passionate or interested about? Do you have a process that you work through that allows them to maybe explore what might be the best fit for them? We do. A lot of times what we'll, we'll, we'll start out by talking to them on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, if they decide to just come in, that's fine as well. Uh, they're more than welcome to just stop by and get some information. Um, but really gathering the information on what's going on in their lives mm -hmm. helps us to um, maybe a system in finding the right program. So okay. by asking them the questions of, you know, what interests you? What what could you see yourself really wanting to do? Or what have you always wanted to do that felt that you just can't get to without going to, to college? Right. Um, that's how we really helped find, you know, what it is and, and kind of help narrow it down to a specific. Take them on a tour of the campus, let mm -hmm. them see the labs, let them see the classrooms and, and speak to other you know, uh, in, instructors and, and program directors and, and just by seeing some of the classrooms and labs a lot of times helps them to realize this is what they can do and this is what they want to do. Great. And I know that a lot of, at least particularly with my students, um, most of them tend to be, you know, people that referred them here that were students that were here because um, they may particularly my students because they are non-native English speakers they may not be as aware of it but that community has been able to let them know how we are able to assist them and be able to work around um, some of those barriers so that they are able to find success um, so out in the community we find that we're uh, working many times just to educate people to what's going on really behind our doors here. Mm -hmm. And before we wrap it up, we, just, um, we also are very committed to co uh, community events. So many times, uh, you know, you'll see us at the street, at the farmer's market mm -hmm. or um, some career fairs, as Ryan mentioned, and Carly typically will have a booth. I know that you were at several, um, like some football games or something like that, so that you could um, let people know what the information is. But um, as Ryan said, they are always available here during the school, uh, business hours to answer questions if anybody just wants to pop in or um, 
Ryan would be more than happy to discuss at length and, and everything, yeah. and even in a little bit in Espanol, too. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us, and thank you, Carly and Ryan, for um, explaining what it is exactly that you know the admissions department's role is and what the goal is so that you can be able to um, match the student up with the appropriate program so that they can then build that bridge to career success. Absolutely. So, thank you for having us. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, and with that, we'll see you the next time. Thank you. Photo. <laughs>